event uh, here at the Mammy Boat Show. And uh, it's obviously really different this year. It's going to be, well, it is at the uh, Miami Beach Convention Center. And there's a couple other off-site locations too on the water displays and whatnot. But um, I'm going to do a walk around, just kind of see if I can um, throw my two cents in on some of the boats around. There's uh, sort of the uh, standard boats you'd imagine being here. And it's, it's kind of a smaller show in some ways because um, I think some brands aren't here this year and there's sort of inventory issues and whatnot so we'll just take a look um see what's out there some really cool displays so cigarette has a great display and uh mti has a big display so there's there's definitely some cool stuff to see i know dcb brought their 37 cat and um there'll be some other boats to see as well so we'll look around we'll throw some comments uh, i like to comment on the other boats too the non-performance boats because i like to just see what's out there and uh yeah we'll see uh any new product there's a few new products i think there's a few i did a bit of a wander around and there's a a little electric outboard concept from mercury called the avatar i believe and it's sort of a portable electric um and it's going to be the start of a rollout of some more electric offerings from mercury so that'll be kind of interesting to see and then there's what else is there a few other things I'll, I'll just kind of walk around and see what's out there really it's actually a really nice facility though so um it's nice to be inside sort of on the docks all the time at the old show which was cool in some ways but really hard to get to and the weather wasn't great it was not the best show but uh this is a lot more room nicer amenities better food which i really care about a lot it's probably the most important thing to me so yeah a quick look at the uh, cigarette display pretty uh, pretty intense pretty awesome it's a boat show after all so I was put on a show it's pretty cool basically all our boats are So Cigarette has actually acquired uh, Doug Wright design, and I believe it's Vector Manufacturing, which uh, does a lot of mold and composite manufacturing for many boat companies, so that'll be really interesting. And yeah, they got the whole plan to actually stop making a lot of these models and revamp the entire lineup. There's going to be a new 35 Cafe style, um, a redesigned 38, I believe. I think the 515 will stay, and then the center consoles will be redesigned and relaunched. So, not sure why this uh, Ferrari's here, but it looks really good. 512TR What's mint It's Burke's inspired NFTs Not only is cigarette known for power, speed, and performance But cigarette is also known for safety But we're going to take safety to a whole other level We are adding anti-collision systems to avoid Of the uh, e jet personal watercraft. So, a little bit of a showstopper at the cigarette booth and the show in general is this 1984 cigarette restored by Phil at Lipship Performance in Miami. Two year restoration, and it shows it's impeccable. It's awesome. It has a Mercury Racing 600 SCI. And uh, custom interior, obviously. 
really nice, tasteful, kind of retro, but with some modern upgrades. And uh, a neat boat for sure. Some MGI cats. It's an interesting color combo. Not bad, actually. It looks pretty cool. I love the cockpit in the 390, it's really awesome. Bottom of an MTI 390. You can see eight people comfortably, everyone facing forward. Really cool. Attention to detail is awesome on MTI. Kind of an interesting uh, paint job in this one. It's got some red engines, looks cool. Looks good. The MTI, I think it's a 42.
Okay, here's an Outer Limits SV29. This is a, uh, it's hard to get video in here because the, uh, there's not a lot of space, but this is, to me, one of the best looking single engine boats out there. This is uh, absolutely beautiful. This one is a 565. I believe it's going to Canada. Colors are tasteful, really nice. It's um, man, it's a really nice boat. God, they made one a couple years ago that was all white. It looked really cool too. It's just such a beautiful boat, though. The size just works. The lines are perfect. I love the, uh, the windshield's awesome on this thing. That's a really, really nice piece. Yeah, that's a really, really cool boat. Interior is awesome too. Here's a nice right performance uh, bow with twin 450s. Nice paint job, silver and red. Not too radical. All right, so here's a velocity. I think Performance Boat Center is carrying them now. So, the 290 SC. It's a pretty big boat for 29. It's got like a pretty high freeboard. Looks like it's finished off pretty nice. Alicantara, rear sun deck, twin 400 R's. Pretty wild paint job. It's pretty good. The 450Rs use the hydraulic steering, so there's a lot more rigging going on at the front compared to some of the new engines with integrated steering or electric steering. Here's the MTI 50. Not too many do a better job on the fit and finish and just the overall performance of a big center console. These are really nice. the 290 they call it the BR I don't think they make an SS 290 anymore I think they've all the closed deck models are 33 and up maybe 
Um, and this is, you know, you can, apparently, you can still special order a 292 Fast Tech. Um, they just weren't getting a lot of orders, so they don't really have it marketed. But uh, this is actually for a family kind of luxury boat. This isn't that bad. I mean, this is a reasonable layout. Huge swim platform here. Again, this is kind of an advantage. I would go to outboards in this. I don't know if they're planning on it or not, but I I like the uh, stern driving a boat like this. Just gives you a little bit more of a luxury look, more usable area back here. And uh, again, the lines and these are, they've been making these for a long time and they look good. They're a sleek, much better looking boat than some of the competitors out there. In fact, I'd say they'd almost don't have a ton of competition in the sense that they're quite a bit different than the Cobalts and the, the Sea Rays and whatever else. I like them. Here's a 310, kind of a similar layout. You know, honestly, for your money though, I think you get a lot more, you get quite a bit of boat for uh, the money with the 290 and the 310, you jump up quite a bit and it's not, you know, that much more boat. Let's see, here's a segment of 350 CBR 350SS. Very similar. You lose some of the swim platform, you get the extension on the SS. The interior is very similar. So Formula does it right in some ways, like they definitely have good passenger weight distribution unlike some other boat companies, but they have um, a little bit goofy seating, I guess, in some ways, but I, I don't mind it. This is actually really, uh, for kind of a semi-performance luxury family boat, this is actually really nice. And I'd probably get the stern drive over the outboard personally. Looks a little bit too uh, like an afterthought. You know, I'll be honest here. I just I'm not feeling this design of the bigger ones. This sort of squared off look, and it's the outrageous extension off the back for the upboards. It just uh, I don't love it, and I hate that open bow on a boat this size. It's so dumb. It just looks like a brick. And then here's another little thing I have with the formula upwards is the, uh, it's aesthetically a bit of an afterthought with the bracket extension here. Um, just when you're paying that much money for a boat, kind of a top tier boat brand, you just want a little more personally, but it's, you know, it's not horrific. It's just, it looks... A little off, but again, that's why I like the stern drive better. You get significantly more water access room. So the Merc booth has... The biggest new thing is just... Um, I think it's just their their concept, the little electric concept of the Avatar. And um, that's about it. They'll have more stuff probably in the future, but I think it's more of a year where they have to get all hands on deck to manufacture. Now they have obviously quite a few of those V12s on hand, but um, yeah. Here's the electric avatar. A little tin boat or a little inflatable or a canoe you can just throw that on there and get to your fishing spot or your camping site not a bad little idea i think they're going to expand this into the um i would i would bet the four horse you know two or four horsepower all the way up to about 20 and then your term is going to be electric uh probably not in the too distant future and then it'll slowly creep up and we'll see what happens with battery power
some of my favorites actually. Uh, the smaller Pro XS is I actually like the 175 V6 Pro XS, the 150 and the 115. Those are all great repower engines. Reasonably affordable. This 175 is great. Really good engines. Priced really well. There it is, the Godzilla outboard. It's on lots of boats, uh, the show here. It's really a game changer for the big ones. It's, uh, it's got a lot of innovation and it, it's not my market obviously, but it makes, if you have a massive boat that would usually run quads or quints, then it makes so much sense. You can reduce to twins or triples and you know, it averages out as far as your cost. And you just get, uh, again, those kind of innovative features built in so you can mount it. I think it's 26 on center, so you can have them actually mounted really close. These engines are huge, but they're, you'll see them mounted on twins or triples, and they're just really tightly packed in because you can use the, uh, or it uses the uh, lower unit by itself, isolate to steer. There it is. It's kind of neat. The Yamaha jet boats are, uh, you know what, they're not my favorite, but you know what, they do such a good job marketing and selling these things. They give you like a turnkey package. And um, you can kind of do worse. Like they give you a really good price. You just, it comes with a trailer. You kind of just turn the key and go and you can put your whole family on it. It's, you know, they did, they hit that on the head, so to speak. I think, uh, yeah. And they got some cool colors. They don't really, you know, it's a no frills. And the design is not like offensive. They actually look pretty decent. I mean, I wouldn't get too excited with them myself, but they don't look like some of their competitors who just build absolute appliances. These actually have a little bit of style to them. Again, cool colors. Doing a great job marketing these things. Now, personally, the jet drives are... They have some minor advantages, but uh, the biggest one, I think, for a lot of these guys is that for beginner boaters and other things, they're hard to get... You, you can run someone over and not kill them as easily. And then you can also, um, they're kind of easier maintenance in a way, but I don't even know if that's true, actually. It's more just the thing, just running people over, but, uh, but the jets are, for the most part, super inefficient. But actually, it's so funny. It actually looks like some of these companies have been listening because they do have the forward-facing seats now, two plus three, they have these rear seats, which are awful, but um, but they do have the rear bend. So that's kind of interesting. Almost like you're listening to these videos that, oh, these guys got the U-shape here, but yeah, no, it's, that twin jets, it's so inefficient, it's unbelievable. Jet drives are literally water pumps. It's, propellers are significantly more efficient.
not much new from Suzuki. Just uh, I think they have. I think they're dropping the 150 SS. Not a big seller, and then they have the digital 140. The 140 is. Uh, if you're in the market for 140, it's not a performance oriented boat. It's awesome. Really well priced, super small. I think it's 390 pounds. So it's probably one of the, probably the best 140 out there. Again, if you're more into like a fishing boat that's not intended to be fast or anything, it's probably, it's a great repower engine. It has digital as an option, which is great. So yeah, Suzuki, I like Suzuki in a lot of ways. Just not really my kind of boating necessarily, but I think they're doing a great job. They look really good. Price really well, tons of features. And that um, 300 is kind of maybe a little underrated actually. It's a nice gear case, well priced. Nice three power engine. That's a huge part of their game is repowering. So not much has changed at Suzuki. Uh, a few updates. Like this is actually, in my mind, if they had slightly taller gears on this, this is a secretly a great engine. And you can get digital controls, it's priced really well, and it's light. It's 300 and, I think it's 386 pounds or 390 pounds. So if you, if you had a needled sport boat that was really small and light, that's a kind of neat engine, but just the gear ratio kind of messes it up for that purpose. Uh, everything else is similar. To, they're actually going to introduce some new SS engines, I've been told. I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to be released at the Bassmasters. I don't know the, all the details, but it'll be probably based on their V6 lineup. And they've dropped the 150 SS. It just wasn't doing well in the market. They didn't love how it performed, and it uh, is being dropped. So they'll still make the 200 SS. And that's about it. I think they're just going to bring in... Uh, Few updates to the v6 again i actually like suzuki's great aesthetics good value good power engine um and i mentioned in an article it's actually a 20 inch 300 is actually this is knit here this is actually their dual prop 300 but the smaller 300 is one of the few in a 20 inch midsection it's mercury and suzuki and that's it I think I talked about it already in one video, but these Sea-Doo switches are what is wrong with the marine industry in a nutshell. These are absolute pieces of shit. It's unbelievable. It's embarrassing. This company is absolutely embarrassing. It's unbelievable. It's just, this whole seat just shakes. It's made, it's everything's plastic. This is like bendable plastic here. Like it's just unfucking believable. I guess we had like a pond or something like that and you're just kind of passing out in the sun. But again, you can just, there's so many other boats out there. Floating docks, pontoons that aren't made of plastic. Just awful. Cobalt used to make some of the nicest looking uh, family sport boats around. I don't think they do anymore. They kind of changed their styling. It's a little better maybe, but they went to these square windshields, old school, and more of an angular design. I don't like it compared to the old ones, but uh, you can see how they've integrated the outboards probably better than Formula does because they're kind of like a molded in as opposed to actual independent bracket but yeah they've kind of fallen victims to the weird seating layouts as well and again the problem with these outboards on these is you lose the whole swim platform so you have almost no swim platform So, it takes away from the boat, to me. Not, not a terrible seating layout in this, so you get a lot of real estate because it's a big boat. It's a 33, pretty beamy. There's a Fountain 38 CC. 
with a pretty competitive, sleek center console. Usually pretty fast, as Bounds are known for. Just, I don't personally don't see a ton of uh, differentiation in a lot of these center consoles. They're just so similar. They're kind of like SUVs, I guess, in a way. They're just all the same for the most part. Here's the Intrepids. They're kind of cool. They're sleeker looking boats. Been around for a long time. Kind of using the same design for a long time, but they're really cool looking. Very different. And I do like how they have the center console with the forward cabin. It's actually a really... In a weird way, it's old school. That's how a lot of center consoles back in the day had sort of a, a cabin and then they had a center console. into big center consoles so they don't have a, these are the open ones I'll show you the one over there has a closed cabin well that's why we want to come and look in it's just I'm, like I said I'm just starting to figure out what I'm needing and what I want but Seven Intrepid Triple B12s. Some of us don't have a second boat. Full cabin. It's a beast. Here's a Sea Hunters. This is a Miami brand. Pretty nice offshore fishing boats. They're really beamy, deep. This is nice. Fit and finish is nice on these. There's the Sea Hunter. It's a 39. It's a big boat. It's so big. Pretty cool though. This is their cat. That's a really narrow tunnel. Deep and narrow. What a beast. These things look like brick walls. They're super ugly, but they actually are really functional, really stable. Let's see here. So you get just a complete. Look at that. It seems narrow just because this tunnel is so narrow, but it's actually just got. Ton of beam and just a massive freeboard, like massive. Just a tank. So these these big offshore cats or center console style ones are just so ugly. I just can't get over it. But they work. That's the thing. It's like a work truck or a minivan. It's ugly, but it works. So here's a 39 Sea Hunter, and you can see, it's funny because you see a lot of boats from Europe more than ever. Um, a few different brands like Axopar, I think it's Sadokar. There's a bunch of like brands from Finland and other areas, and sometimes you'll see one from them, and it's like a 37 footer. And uh, in boats in general, the size discrepancy of 
I mean, the length of the boat is just one measurement. You can see this boat has got a massive draft, very beamy. This is quad, four fifty, or sorry, three hundred hours, but it's um, it's a big boat. It seems bigger, and then you see a boat like a thirty-seven Axopar, and it looks tiny compared to this, and it's got significantly less beam, half of the draft probably. Totally, I'm not saying one's better than the other, I'm just saying it's just funny how length is just such a deceiving metric sometimes. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, this boat is massive. That's a really deep entry, wow. But this thing would be a monster offshore, I'm sure. Here's the Axopar lineup. These are actually, uh, I like them. They're uh, neat designs, really practical. I actually kind of like that closed cabin one there. If you lived in a cold climate, that'd be really cool. Um, here's their 22. And it's really narrow. Seems like a good design as far as just like a family center console. And uh, kind of a no frills. Like I actually, that's what I kind of like about them. They're simple. And I've actually ridden in a 37 and performs really good. You don't need a ton of power too because it's, it's a narrow, lighter boat. You know, you see, I was talking earlier about a the CVs and Sea Hunters and much of other offshore center consoles and you look at a 30 you look at a 33 Sea Hunter and it's twice as big as this boat like this boat is small but that's good if you that's what you want like this is a sleeker you know more minimalist type boat not really an offshore boat like that um you can see the front has it doesn't really have any flare and you know if you buried the front it wouldn't be the best it wouldn't be the best day in the water but uh Cool boats, nonetheless. Nice yeah, looking contender. Hmm. Here's a dusky. Twenty two dusky, two hundred Suzuki seventy one. It's pretty fair, I think. Looks pretty cool. These are old school. He's an old style bracket, like almost like an Armstrong bracket. Makes it really, I like it actually a lot. This is cool. Very useful. Ninety-five. And here's the fountains. Just. Not super exciting to me, just, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. Here's the Midnight Express uh, booth, local company in Miami here. Really popular boats. Don't know much about them. Not really my style. They don't really make any performance. Only they used to make performance, but it's not anymore. And here's Nortec. I think they have an on the water display too. Actually look good. I actually like that hull design. It looks nice. Quite a bit sleeker than a lot of the uh, other center consoles you see right now. There's 
Scouts. And Scout has um, kind of a unique look. They're cool. I actually think they're pretty cool. Kind of traditional in some ways. Look at that spray rail. They got the deck line really picks up. Goes into like a pretty big flared bow. I kind of like that. Pretty, pretty cool boats. And they make actually small boats too. That's where the smallest one is, but they make some really small boats. So I like that. Alright, single 300 on a 27 foot Sea Ray. Base price is 122. The options here are 28,000. So, comes pretty, pretty expensive. It looks kind of weird, this boat. So the windshield doesn't really fit. The finish, I don't know what happened to these boats. The finish is awful. Just swirls everywhere and just kind of weird. So they pulled the windshield off of like a 20 footer and put it on a 27. Just looks all wrong. So 150 plus thousand dollars. Black boat too. You gotta be really. You can see the the waves. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I can see waves and all the sort of flaws. Because black is uh, like a mirror; doesn't doesn't hide anything. Really hard to pull off. You can see immediately some of the advantages when you have a swim platform and a big bow with multiple engines the clean rigging on this like the absence of any rigging actually it's all digital or else all the steering is integrated obviously so you have nothing in the way which is kind of an advantage for these boats as opposed to having hydraulic lines even electric lines or anything else brackets kind of interesting too very sleek. Chaparral. Hmm. I mean, they all, a lot of these boats look the same. They have the same windshield, same design. Oh, these guys got the interior right there. Look at that. Nice. Two plus three. Sun deck. This is actually the. I take it back. Chaparral is my favorite, huh? Wow. Look at this. This is actually useful. You can actually use this rear deck as a swim platform. A much better seating layout. Maybe they're listening to my video from a couple years ago. Hmm. Smart. Pretty good looking boats, actually. Kind of traditional. So the U-shape in this model, it's a little bit bigger, I think. It just, it doesn't, you don't gain anything because one person sits here 
and you'd have to squeeze two in the middle and then your knees are hitting the people on the side and then their heads hitting here so it's kind of a weird it's just like i said it's not solving a problem it's just making kind of a weird sitting arrangement but uh i just i like sitting forward in a boat This is a bit bigger model. I think this is a 26 or 28 or something like that. You can see the uh, the towers on these are like a well, it's a whole roof system. It's got a sunshade, sun what do you call it? Sun top. And it's really heavy duty. It probably weighs, who knows what it weighs, like a ton. You get lighting in there. There's probably optional speakers. It's got to be really strong because it's going to support a bunch of weight. Um, just, I, don't, I hate it. I think it's stupid. But Okay, so here's the Regal display. God, those towers, I just hate them. Ugh. Reversible seats, totally useless option. Hmm. Pretty wild color. So in a boat this small, the step is kind of useless. And you can see they just, it's very really smooth. It looks like it might be kind of slippery in a really tight turn, but who knows? The color is cool. The seating kind of looks awkward to me. I just like forward facing seats so much better. But as far as sort of regular ugly boats go, it's not the worst. Actually, I like Regal in some ways. They look decent. Steering wheel is a disaster. Don't so like that. The one thing about these weird interiors is like they don't really solve a problem. There's no problem with sitting forward two plus three or two plus four. Whereas they make these weird shapes where people sit sideways and hit their head on the tower or the windshield. And it's kind of weird. Monterey, actually, they actually have decent styling. I have to say, it's not, it's probably one of the sleeker family boats around. Sorry for the footage, it's really tight in here, lots of people. But it's um, not a bad looking boat. Again, I actually, really, I'd prefer a stern drive in a boat this size. It's like a 30 footer, but not a bad looking boat. It's a 22 foot Monterey. It looks like it has a the seating out of an old competition ski boat, kind of. But again, this is actually really bad seating for a couple of reasons. You can see the all the passengers are going to be on the port side. So on a little boat like this, it's going to lean to that side really badly. And for the most part, you're not going to lounge facing backwards. Your head's going to be almost hitting that windshield. 
and side facing passengers are going to hit the windshield or just be really uncomfortable. It's totally useless. It's probably one of the worst seating, seating arrangements I've seen in a while. This reminds me, this is the Scarab 165. It actually reminds me of the old bathtub jet boats that were really popular. I say bathtub, like everyone had a little jet boat in the 90s. I, I think it was like the 90s. And um, it's uh, <laughs> it's just like those. Everyone had one. It was so funny. I think Sea Ray, Bayliner, Baja, Checkmate, everyone had a little jet boat. It was just a craze. And this looks just like that. So if you ever want to just get back into a little jet boat, it's probably fun. I mean, it's a disaster for the most part, but I've seen worse. Here's the Tohatsu booth, which is uh, made in partnership with Honda, I believe. Here's a Spanish Wells. Very traditional looking boat, kind of cool, I like it. Dragonfly boat works, Spanish Wells. So Dragonfly makes a few really cool models, actually. I don't think they're at the show with their own line, but this is with Tohatsu, but they make a really neat little, uh, almost like a flats boat. And this one here, this is really nice. I like this little bow rise. It's, it's really nice lines. All right, Torquedo. This guy's been around for a while, been kind of a bit of the, the leader and the electric upwards, sort of. We're gonna get some serious competition soon. And um, a little pressure on the pricing and the offerings, but kind of cool if you have a little, I would say it'd be kind of cool to put a little electric, one of those little tiny ones on like a little John boat. If you had to just commute somewhere on the water, it'd be kind of a good idea. These pathfinders are nice. You're seeing a lot of, uh, Pretty cool colors on these bay boats. They actually do a good job of neat. It's all blue. That's kind of shark gray or nardo gray. And here's the Hughes boats, which are really cool. Old old brand, been around forever. High quality. This is actually, they're 16. It looks really big though. It's got a crazy beam on it. Lots of deck space here for fishing. This is actually, I like this a lot. These are, it's kind of a, really practical fishing boat but you can tell it's built like a tank look at this thing that's good and bad it's probably going to be a bit of a tank to drive but it's probably great do a little bit of a light chop for fishing stability and a 16 this feels more like an 18 so it's probably a good bang for the buck so to speak although you'd be shocked at the price point on some of these high-end fishing boats it's uh serious money but that's a nice boat this is the Red Fisher 18, very similar to the 16, probably stretched out version. It's been around forever, this one. This is a nice power package. I actually love these engines. These are, this is a double of red cam, four cylinder. Competes directly with the uh, 150 Pro XS with a slightly better gear ratio on the Yamaha. When I say better, I just mean it has a slightly taller gear. So anything performance related, you're gonna get a little bit more out of it. Um, the standard 150 Merc has a 192 ratio, which is slightly taller than this one. So it's, pick your poison, but this is revs to 6,000 RPM, relatively compact. I like it. It looks cool. Um, boat looks awesome. Serious fishing rig right here. I don't know much about fishing, but this is a nice looking boat. Really well built. You can just see the fit and finish is really high end on this. Looks like the same beam as the 16. This is interesting. Let's see the specs here. I don't see the price and you gotta scan that thing. I don't, I'm just so lazy. I can't do that right now. Nice boat though. Here's a Maverick. Um, this is a cool boat too. This is a very no frills. This is more of a smaller, lightweight flats boat and the, the Hughes are more of like a, kind of like a flats boat, but they're a little bit deeper and bigger this is super light and small has a 70 this is one of the lightest 70 if not the i think this is the lightest 70 in the market this is a 
Yamaha 70 that weighs, I want to say, under 300 pounds. It's really compact. It's a nice engine. Kind of perfect for these kind of boats. I need that lightweight, but just enough jam to get it going. Really cool boat. No frills. Love that. And you can see the uh, exaggerated flare on the... It's not even a, it's not a flare necessarily. It's a... They push the deck way beyond the hull and it creates like a splash, splash well kind of splash guard effect. Uh, a lot of boats do it. Great for a little fishing boat like this where you uh, might have to cross a bay or something like that or get to your spot somehow. Anyways, neat boat. All non-skid. I like it. Vacuum assisted resin infusion system. A lot of words there. Sounds good. This is the 18 version. That other one was the 17. This is an 18. Really nice. Part of me kind of likes the utility of these little inflatables, rigid inflatables, but when you see the price on some of them, you just want to move to a different country and just live off the land. It's insane. And most of them are kind of useless. Like, you don't need a console on about this small. It's just so dumb. Good size, just big enough to have a console, maybe. This cost is pretty cool. A shot of it. Yeah, this is a great steering system. This is actually uh, going to start to be really common, I think. This is a fully electric from the actuator all the way to the, the wheel. So there's no like hydraulic helmet all. This is not a electric assist. It's a full electric system. And it uses a really sophisticated um, scrolling gear mechanism in the actuator and uh, makes for super precise super smooth steering when i first heard about it, i thought it would be kind of a sloppy system but i got to see a demo and when you look at the mechanism you can realize it's actually going to be better than hydraulic for most high performance situations depending um, but generally speaking it's going to have very little play if you know almost zero play um, in the actual steering so that's actually really cool Boat. This is actually a pretty cool boat. Um, I like it because it's uh, reasonably practical. It's a cat, so it probably rides really well. Pretty roomy. Don't mind this. Here's the axle pars in the water. Looks like a 28 and a 37. Alright, let me go. Here's a a rib called Sax. I'm not sure what I think was that name. But I'm not sure anything about this boat either. Hmm. Really fucking weird layout. This thing is kind of a disaster. Totally useless front space. Yeah, I think it's back to the drawing board for Saks. Maybe on the name too. Fresh start. This looks kind of cool. SPX 25. Hull price, 81,000. Hmm. It's 
So you got two people can stand up and then maybe a couple people can sit behind you. And when you're not moving, you can lay on that bench. What a disaster. I don't like that anymore. I, don't, I take it back. This thing's a piece of shit. Look at that console. What a... Who designed that console? It's horrible. Who designed some of these boats? I can't even wrap my head around it. So that's it, that's uh, the Mammy Boat Show this year, different venue, uh, just kind of a different turnout, probably, I guess it's just as big, it's hard to say because the venue's different, so it's hard to measure it. You know, a lot of people don't have inventory, so a lot of manufacturers have just uh, the boats they have on, or they have customer boats on display, as opposed to the past where they would probably have their inventory on display, or dealer inventory anyway. Um, so yeah, that was uh, great to see tons of people uh, Friday got really busy, so uh, the show seems really popular again, which is great. So good news for the industry overall. And although there wasn't any major um, product announcements necessarily, uh, nice to see some of the new products kind of in action. Seeing a lot more of those uh, V12 600s, and then just so many 450Rs, obviously, which is not new necessarily, but just seeing a lot of those, a lot of cats so many center consoles it just blows my mind but um yeah it was actually a pretty fun show i like that venue it's a really nice facility just uh brand new basically and easy to get around uh sometimes it's nice to be on the docks um but when the whole show is almost the entire show on the docks it's kind of tricky and hard to move around and this one's a little more easy food's better accessibility is much much easier um I'm pretty much walking home, so I'm probably not the normal customer. But uh, anyways, yeah, really good show. I'm trying to think what stuck out for me. I think, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to see the uh, 360 APX Mercury Racing engine on display. See it in the flesh. Really cool piece. And then, um, again, just kind of seeing a lot of people. Just seeing all the, all the boats. You know, not a ton of innovation. I'd say there's more... Just the beginnings of uh, some of the electric stuff you're going to see. You know, you're going to see these really small horsepower from 5 to 50, 60, 70, 80 horsepower range electric. Um, from the big manufacturers, it's probably going to be just a rollout to, you know, 5 to 20 horsepower, something like that, until we sort of get more battery technology where the cost comes down and uh, you know, it's not, not quite there yet. And just the use case for a Marine is just so different than anything on land. So lots of unique challenges um, from an energy standpoint. So that being said, kind of cool to see some of the electric stuff just for fun. And then um, you just see, I'll show you some video later of just some oddball boats that you just don't see very often if you're in other parts of the country. But in, Miami, we see so many like European brands and just so many weird boats. So I'll try to show those too. There's a few weird boats at the show. Um, anyways, that's it. Hope you enjoy my commentary, comments. <laughs>